and welcome to What the Fort. Today we're looking at glass bottles. Glass bottles were first used in Britain in the Roman period, but today we're looking at post-medieval ones. Glass bottles were used to transport drink, medicines and household products such as inks and poisons and many of today's recognisable brands started by using glass bottles in the 19th century. Wine bottles were first made in Britain in the middle of the 17th century. These early bottles were strong enough to have a cork driven into their necks. They were first made in the form of a short squat body with a long tapering neck and these are known as globe and shaft bottles. By the late 17th century, the neck shortened and these were known as onion bottles. And by the late 18th century, cylindrical, tall-bodied bottles were also in common use. In 1821, Henry Ricketts obtained a patent for a bottle mould. This allowed bottles to be made in a uniform size and letters and symbols could be embossed on the sides. The rims were still finished by hand at this stage. Machine finishing in the late 19th century allowed for the invention of the internal thread screw for sealing the bottle and later the external thread screw with a metal cap which became popular in the early 20th century. As previously mentioned, wine came in glass bottles, as did beer, like this beer bottle from Shepton Mallet. Milk also came in glass bottles, as well as fruit juice, such as this Eiffel Tower fruit juices bottle. Fizzy drinks came in these cod bottles, which have a marble in the top. They were filled upside down and the pressure pushed the marble against the washer in the top, which meant the gas couldn't escape. Medicines also came in glass bottles. These include opium-based medicines, such as laudanum, which came in small apothecary bottles. There were also early cough mixtures, such as venos and lung tonic. There are now products that we know had no medicinal benefits. These include hair restorer, which had lead and combustible kerosene, and also blood mixture, which was a mixture of sugar, alcohol, and it had traces of ammonia and chloroform. Ballpoint pens were not introduced until the end of the 19th century and early fountain pens were expensive and not used widely until the mid to late 19th century. Most people used either quills or later they used metal dipping pens. Both were dipped into liquid ink. Ink was transported and stored in both stoneware and glass vessels. The glass ink bottles came in multiple shapes and sizes including all of these. Not all bottles around the house would have contained consumables. Household products such as poisons also came in glass bottles. Many of these had the words poisonous not to be taken written on them. They also had stripes down the bottles to signify that they were poisonous to those who could not read or those who grabbed a bottle thinking it was medicine in the half light of a candle. Poisons used in the home in the Victorian period included arsenic and strychnine to poison rats, ammonia as a house and laundry cleaner and carbolic acid which was used as an antiseptic. These poisons were widely accessible and there were obviously hideous accidents and some intentional deaths through the use of these liquids and powders in these bottles. Many brands still used today began in embossed glass bottles in the 19th century. These include Vino's Lightning Cough Cure, Leon Perrin's Worcestershire Sauce, Co-op Milk Bottles and Boots the Chemist. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the wide range of bottles used in recent history. Thanks for watching and do like and subscribe. Hope to see you soon.